There once was a hamster who answered to Clive. But he, to be honest, of all creatures alive, wasn't the nicest or sweetest of fellows. In fact, he was mean and terribly jealous. When he saw a big cake with a very small rabbit, Clive licked his lips and said, I must have it. Ooh, that looks tasty. Ooh, that looks sweet. So Clive scared the rabbit who beat a retreat, making sure that the candles were all blown out first. Clive stuffed in the cake till his cheeks nearly burst. When the rabbit returned, he looked round and round. He looked behind Clive. Then he looked on the ground. Where is my cake? Where can it be? Clive shrugged his shoulders. Don't look at me. Then Clive turned on his tail and went off in a huff and would have gone home, but cake wasn't enough. For then he saw Doris choosing hats at a stall, all shapes and all sizes, tall, short, big, and small. Ooh, they look tasty. Ooh, I'd look cool if I had all that headwear and wore it to school. So Clive gave her a scare which frightened her off, then snatched up the hats and had a quick scoff. When Doris returned, she looked round and round. She looked behind Clive, then she looked on the ground. Where are my hats? Where can they be? Clive shrugged his shoulders. Don't look at me. Now Clive would have gone home had he not heard the sound of some kind of music sh sh shake in the ground. And he spotted a gerbil, whose name was Young Dean, with a bass-boosted boombox-type music machine. Ooh, that looks tasty. Ooh, that looks neat. So Clive scared the gerbil, who beat a retreat. <laughs> when the gerbil returned, he looked round and round, he looked behind Clive. Then he looked on the ground. Hey, where's my music? Where can it be? Clive shrugged his shoulders. Don't look at me. The music machine then played the next song, and its beat was so bumpy, Clive's head thumped along. Help me, squeaked Clive, but the sound was too loud. The gerbil was singing and dancing around. My head is exploding, said Clive in distress. I must stop the music. I want to confess. So that's what Clive did. He emptied his cheeks and out tumbled things they'd been missing for weeks. Doris said, Clive, all this stealing and stealth has not really hurt us. You stole from yourself. This cake and those hats and that tape machine too were part of a party we were planning for you. Clive saw he'd been selfish, whilst they'd all been caring. Instead of my stealing, I could have been sharing. Clive said he was sorry and was good all that week, so they still threw a party and played hide and seek. The rabbit hid first. Where could he be? Clive shrugged his shoulders. Don't look at me. 